Hi guys, the old man's back. <laughs> I'm only in the shop just to do this uh, little bit of intro. And uh, this video is showing some features, <laughs> a few of a great many, in uh, Web Machinist. It's a Windows standalone software. And uh, two, just over two years ago, I did a review on version 7.2, which I found very useful. Since then, I think there have been two or three incarnations leading up to version 11, which is what we're looking at now. Um, it's a fairly, well, I say low resolution. I think the application is probably nominally about uh, what should we say, 1000 by 800, maybe a bit less, um, which means it'll cope with low resolution screens, although most of us are probably up that much higher. I think I run mine at about 1680. So anyway, it's very compact and uh, ideal to have in your laptop if you've got it in the workshop. So I'm just running through some examples, give you some idea of what it's all about. And we start off looking at the uh, website just to get some information from that. And then I look at some examples in the application itself. Overall, it's extremely useful. Uh, a lot of information, of course, will be in your machinery's handbook or similar things. But to have it all in one little package is extremely useful. So anyway, uh, follow me through now as I just... Uh, review it and uh, at the end of the review I'll add another short section of waffle <laughs> just to bring you up to date on what's going on all right so we're on the uh, website initially this is part of the main menu which gives a fairly quick visual idea of what's contained in the program. And then if we scroll down, there's a little bit coming up below to make the complete menu. A lot to choose from, and some of these are actually categories as against uh, just single specifics. And then we'll move on to the um, contents. Now you may want to pause the uh, video but we're just looking down on the whole list here to get some idea of what's there. There's a heck of a lot actually. <laughs> it's very hard to take it all in. You'll see a lot of these are listed as calculators extremely useful but there's also a lot of just general information reference information the sort of thing you'd look up perhaps for uh, uh, tapping drills and things like that we're now in the application itself so we've got the main menu again I'm looking at the uh, top menu We've got file, calculators, lots of calculators, and again pause if you need to. Then we've got reference material, a lot of useful stuff there. And then this is a new addition, the uh, program map. And this is a very useful visual display of what you've got available. It takes a little bit of study, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a lot there, a lot of good stuff. Now looking at the lower part of the uh, program map, again you can see there's a lot there. 
needs studying a bit, but it's a very useful guide to get where you want to go. This is a very useful section, uh, dividing and indexing. You can select one of the uh, plate manufacturers. Just putting in an example here, which is probably a rather easy one, 55 divisions. And then uh, on the left there, we come up with information for actually all the plates. And again, you can pause and look at the uh, details. It gives you an idea of how many handle turns, how many holes in the plate, etc. Now try some other numbers. Put in uh, 17 for the divisions. See what we get from that. Again, more useful information which can help you get set up really quite quickly for your division job. Now, T-nuts and T-slots. And in the left column, we've selected half inch. So we've got a set of dimensional parameters relevant to that size of slot. And then we can select the half inch T-nut and again the set of dimensional parameters and on the left side there you can see probably this um, 3 8 16 for a threaded stud now a look at uh, collet calculators some of the more common types and uh, the C series 5C in particular probably something that many of us have in the shop. Useful dimensions if you're wanting to make a collet holder. And the ER series, very versatile. We go here 40, 16, 32, useful dimensions again. And finally the uh, R8 collet Now, bolt circle calculations, very useful. I don't have a smart DRO, it's a very basic one. So this is very useful. And put in your number of holes, we'll make it simple, eight. And uh, what should we have, a six inch diameter? Angle to first hole, that can be a zero or leave it blank. And uh, center of pattern, as usual, probably going to be 0 and 0 on X and Y. Full circle. Calculate. And there's the pattern laid out. So we got the 0, 0 center point, And the first hole will be on 0. So all the other information you need then to use this is on the left side and the XY coordinates relevant to your uh, chosen center point. Now this can be a fairly quick way of setting up for your assign bar and the, most usually you probably want to find uh, what gauge blocks you need. So we get a choice here, we put in a desired angle, 30, that's an easy one. Length of sign bar, we'll call that 5 inch. And then we get uh, predictably a simple <laughs> block height, 2.5. And on the right there's a gauge block list. But if you wanted the gauge block list separately, you can go down bottom left and select that and uh, put in your total height and then it'll give you a selection of blocks to use. Now a thread calculator is pretty useful. In particular if you're wanting information on an acme thread which is a rather specialized animal. 
Um, ID threads, probably the most critical in some respects. Adam Booth did one recently. I've selected seven eighths. His was probably somewhat bigger than that. But for an ID thread, it's pretty critical to know what dimensions you need. And going back to the basic threading menu, we'll just select, look around and select the uh, SAE sizes. We've got OD threads on the left, ID threads on the right. And uh, let's look at uh, quarter 20, quarter 23A. Pretty much there, all the information you might need. Moving on now to the spur gear calculator. Very, very useful indeed. There are lots of dimensions that are really critical when it comes to gear cutting. And uh, if we go to calculate, we can put in number of teeth, which we'll say is something simple like, uh, what should we put? 24. Um, diameter for pitch diameter, 3.5. 14 and a half pressure angle, pretty common. And then on the left we come up with all the relevant specific dimensions, which are going to be very critical and necessary to relate to your proposed gear cutter. There is a metric version as well, by the way. Now some taper calculators and information, which is extremely useful. And uh, Morse tapers, number two first, and then a number four. If you're wanting to turn a male or female to this pattern, very useful. Jacob's taper, number two, fairly common. And of course you can have uh, metric dimensions if you want. Also you can calculate angles based on taper per foot or tape of a foot based on angles. So just to wrap up, a couple of stills of even more features. Uh, I think if I did a video of the whole thing it would probably last about two hours, so we've really only just scratched the surface. But I think you might get some idea of uh, how useful the various features can be to have all in one package, particularly if it's on your laptop uh, in the shop. Thanks for watching. So having uh, gone through the web machinist stuff, where are we at now? <laughs> um, many people are aware, particularly if you're up in the north, vaguely in the north, <laughs> that winter has not really given up yet. <laughs> We've had more snow and one of the problems getting out in the shop has been that whilst occasionally, today in fact, the temperature's up a bit, but the problem is the nighttime temperatures are so low that uh, any natural heat that gets in during the day is completely cancelled out by a cold night. So I'm looking forward to something better, but uh, over and above that, I've had some other work that I've got to be getting on with, rather important computer stuff, rather tedious but necessary. And also, as weather improves, hopefully, <laughs> I've got a load of yard work to do, amongst other chores. So getting out in the shop to get on with things I really want to do is still a little way in the future. I did also mean to mention once or twice before, and I think Harold actually has had this uh, observation, the notification or notifications that come through for comments are not actually complete. Uh, some of them come through and then after a while there'll perhaps be another one which underneath which there are perhaps four or five six that were never notified. So if I don't actually pick up on a comment uh, that's probably why. I generally try and read them all and make a response but uh, that has been happening a little bit more of late. And what else we got? 
I think that's about it actually, They're all that I can think of for the moment. So trying to be patient, <laughs> get uh, things out of the way, get some decent weather and then start making some chips again. So I'm sorry I haven't been doing much of that. <laughs> it's been most frustrating. Uh, anyway, we've got this far, if you, or if you got this far, thanks for watching. I hope to be back in the not too distant future. <laughs> Take care. Bye.